Okay, thank you for listening. And this is Asteria Romualdi Masawe. I come from Tanzania. And my congregation is the Grail International, which was founded in the Netherlands. Sometimes we call it Holland, as Sister Lucia shared, because we come from the same congregation. And it was founded in the year 1921. Uh, currently, the congregation exists in more than 20 countries worldwide. We have a mission and the mission of our congregation is to transform the world, to make it a better place for people to live in. And we do it by liberating women and serving people through education, health, social work, book apostolate or distrib distribution of scriptures by having different bookstores and, and, and stationaries to enable people get literature, literature books, spiritual books at a reasonable, reasonable price. The charism of our congregation is total love and sacrifice. And we do it by dedicating ourselves totally to save others with love. It is a great joy for a member to see other people happy. With our simple gesture, we help others become what they are. We are created in the image and likeness of God, and therefore we try to make a flower blossom, or let's say we try to make other people happy through our simple gestures, through our services in various activities. Ways that we, prom we use to promote youth development, the congregation carries on different activities to promote youth, youth development. And through the study that was done last year by us, uh, as directed by our facilitators in the Loyola, in the Loyola um, Institute of Ministry, the congregation, we found that the congregation runs around six nursery schools, three primary schools, and one secondary school, and one vocational school, and the Montessori. Uh, and the total number of people who are served in those, uh, in those schools and vocational schools is around is nine, 980, so it's about 1,000. We have other apostolates like hospitals, where we have we own a health center and we, we sometimes the members go out to the village to train others especially in this time of covid and they, or they try also to employ young people so we try to promote um, youth development through various activities that are held in that hospital bookstores like for me now i i work in one of the bookstores and we have more than six young people we are working with and we help them in various ways. Also, we, we run seminars and conferences for youth to form them and also to educate, in the, to educate them in different, and also to listen to their stories, both success and, and successful ones. Now I have my partner ministry. I, I worked with Kisekibaha Home Care or after school center for young people. It is popularly known as Cheke Chair. Sarah, when you, you visited us at Kisekibaha, it was just outside the gate of our congregation. And the population served is all Maasai girls from Mwanga Kilimanjaro. And mostly the center takes care of the Maasai girls from the vulnerable families. The mission of this center is not different, is not different from the entire congregation mission because we are we work for transformation. And in this ministry, we are striving to liberate or transform these Maasai girls from traumatic environment by preventing them from FGM and all marriage practices. First of all, we are separating them from the parents 
and also we educate the parents uh, for them to see the meaning of education and and stopping the retro some of the retrospective cultures that take their girls backward and it creates traumatic environment for them social cultural there are social cultural challenges for these students because uh we call them students because they are taken to the center mainly to nurture them and ensure that they go to school so they are taken while they are still young and they, when they start with the kindergarten and they continue up to standard seven and from there they continue to secondary school and so the center leaders ensure that these girls uh, prosper and they they real uh, catch up with their education so we find that there are social social cultural challenges for these students the parents why why the congregation started this 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 ministry is because we found that the parents are marrying these girls when they are still very young and they take they take these these girls to their mother-in-law to wait for them to mature enough and when they turn to 15 and 16 years old then these mother-in-laws will hand them over to their husbands so they are considered mature enough to carry out full responsibility of a married woman. This is where they start giving birth, they build, they engage in different activities and the main activity in this culture, they, women have to build houses, they keep animals. And it has been proved that this has created some psychological and health issues for these young mothers because it is too heavy for them to carry when they are still at, at that age. So the congregation through this center, they are trying to empower these girls through education. And the main service for these girls, they give home care, or after school, after school services and ensure that these girls go for further school. And the leaders at the center try to look for the funding from within and outside the country to ensure that the, the, girl, the, the center runs well and the girls go to school. We have two sisters who run the center uh, to ensure the safety and prosperity of these girls. Uh, during weekends, the girls are also taught spirituality and self-reliance works through projects such as poultry, rabbit keeping, and, the, and also they do a lot of sport. Uh, we, there are some strengths, and one of them is that the center is, is having buildings, or we can say dormitories, and the classroom. And currently there are 43 young girls who are attending schools and are taken care of. The center also has two sisters who are available all the time to take care of the girls. And they, they are fully available for them. There is also availability for, span, for space, for expansion of the ministry. We also have two other workers. Uh, there are challenges such as limited financial resources. And why? It's because the parents are not participating very well to contribute for the upkeep of these girls. And also very few parents let their children join the center until when they are really forced or they are visited and uh, encouraged so much and they want to see the outcome that uh, that encourages them to, to to allow their students their children to join the school there is also lack of sponsorship like for the girls because as, as i have said the leaders at the center they try to look for for sponsorship from one place to another to ensure that the girls father 
further for their studies. And this year, by the time we were holding our meeting, it was say that one out of five girls who were completing the standard seven managed to receive scholarship. And so uh, that, that situation also, was also traumatic for the girls who did not receive scholarship. And they were worried how they will go back home or what will follow. But the sisters keep on encouraging them and give them hope and, and, and going around to see that the mission continues. Uh, the workers are really crying for enough commission so that they can follow up emerging issues such as legal issues, food and school. Because sometimes they have to go to the police, the social police, especially when the girl is impregnant, especially when they go home for the vacation. During vacation, the girls are allowed to go home to their parents. It happens that in the middle of that time, these girls, some of them, especially from their from their fathers, they because fathers are, they want uh, dowry, and so they force these girls to, to any man. And when the schools open, they don't turn up. What the sisters do, they need now to get to the police and ensure that these girls are helped, are, they are helped to come back to school. Um, vision of the desired future. Uh, there are some, we are desiring for some improvement. We need to increase the number of students, girls to join the center. We also need to increase the, the number of dormitories and workers, support the students up to university or vocation skills in order to get practical skills for self-employment and also life skills for the girls. We, we are also striving for more partnership for action. Factors that they are holding the ministry back, as I said, finite lack of resources. Uh, also, some of the girls they return back home after standard seven, and the problem persists. We, we may find ourselves not solving the problem quite fully. Some of the parents are discouraged to allow their children because some of them they they are not employed during when they they complete like university. That's why now we are encouraging to have vocational, vocational schools or tertiary education that encourage them to have practical skills. Because if this is not done, the situation may trigger the girls, uh, it may uh, trigger parents not to value or see the meaning of our mission for the girls. Uh, workers at the center are paid very little to support their living. And when the goal of the center does not meet the goal of the workers, it may be difficult to achieve the, the goal of the mission. Consultation process for ministry improvement. To so manage to formulate a plan committee in collaboration with the leaders. Uh, we, we hold some meetings and the we did some, we did a strategic plan to ensure that the, for the, for the center's effectiveness, despite of the challenges from here and there, like for the communication and the corona pandemic. And we saw that there is still more need for partnership, addressing on trauma for the center talking to the girls and helping them out from the situation that come, that they always see from their homes. And the participatory learning process of, of identifying where the center was, where it is now, and the strategy for the future was shared. And we, we had hope that it is possible to catch up with what we are planning because we started from nothing since 2000, since the year 2000 and now, we, we have 43 girls and some of the parents are catching up. And here people put the ideas collectively 
but also an idea of social analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, and stress and, and threats was I, I managed to share just briefly. And the consultation process outcome uh, through SWOT, the committee came up with goals that um, necessary that are necess that is necessary for integral human development. And that was to increase the enrollment, to build at least two more dormitories, and to increase the partnership, support the center. Actions to achieve the stated goals, um, we plan for re having regular informative meetings with parents and the entire community, looking for beneficiaries within and outside the, the country. Like now the sisters, they go, especially for the girls who did not manage to, to get scholarship. The sisters go to the school like St. Teresa that uh, Sister Lucy has just shared. And they talk to the school managers and ask them to receive these girls as the sisters at the center continue looking for the support, for full support for the girls. And we thank God because the school management, sometimes they, they also support. And also, they also go to other schools, the neighboring, in the neighboring uh, villages. And also, the, the sisters will also, are also trying to lobby with the government to employ the girls from the Maasai, uh, Maasai community, especially those who are trained in social work and, and, and education, so that when they, are, they graduate, they can be employed in the same environment, in the same community, and the, the, the community around will see the value of their job and they will really adapt to the change. Action committee to ensure that the stated goals are achieved. Uh, okay, there was an action committee which was formulated to ensure the achievement of these goals and strategies that too. By 2025, we achieve all the, the all the discussed advice for ministry improvement and mission, vision and mission must be understood and shared with stakeholders. Uh, training for development partnership as well as addressing youth issues holistically is very important. Helping people come out of trauma while still young is also very important. As Judith say, adults trauma erodes personality, but for a child, repeated trauma forms and deforms the personality already formed. Therefore, if our ministry, if our ministry does not take initiative to carry out its role responsibly, the trauma is likely to destroy our mission. And empathetic listening is very central, especially to these girls. We need to avoid being judgmental and we try to listen to them keenly and encourage them to continue talking. And we have one of the sisters at the center is a counselor and she can manage to talk to them at least once after every week. We also, we also encourage interconnection of all aspects necessary for integral human development. There is no way one talks about development issues without considering health care, dignity issues, justice, human rights issues, and this was a Vatican document. Pope Francis also in Laudato Si emphasizes on integra integrating environment and the economy because of the interconnection between the two which makes it more of one crisis rather than two separate ones. It is important to get enough and relevant skills to enlighten youth at our ministries. And I have brought here this photo. It's not, this, this was in the field. And this sister you see here is the pioneer of this center. She was the first sister to come to that center, she, she, she was called Angela. May she rest in peace because she died last year through road accidents. Actually, it is just last month we, we buried her. It was very sad, but children loved her. Anyway, by that time, she was no longer working in this, in this center. 
but the sisters at the center have allowed me to share this with this photo because she was one of the pioneers. She's with another fellow sister here. And sometimes they visited, like here, I think they visited the parents and the, 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 and the families. So may we observe one minute of silence and pray for the soul of Angela. She's here. And this is another photo from the center. Just showing that they have building. This is a dormitory. This is a thing. It's a. Uh, it looks like a kitchen. And the, what you see behind here is the project house where they put the they they put the ra the rabbit and 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 what what and the poultry. And so that's all. Thank you very much for listening.